Job descriptions can be so overwhelmingly long and filled with so much jargon that you sit there and think, what does this role do? Or am I qualified to apply for this? So today we are going to talk about how to dissect the job description. Now, if we haven't met yet, my name is Cassandra and I help motivated professionals build their careers through practical tips to gain career confidence. And I know, well, at least I know I was this way. I don't know if you were this way, but when I was looking for jobs, I would be scrolling job boards, right? Reading job description after job description and would either get overwhelmed by how much they were asking for or would sit there and go, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this or what does that even mean? I don't even know what they're asking of me in this job. And so I'd end up really not applying to as many as maybe I probably should have. And I don't want that to be you. If you've been feeling that way, I want that to stop right now. Let's dissect that job description. Here are the things I want you to do. Number one, when you are looking at jobs, I want you to have a pen and paper next to you. We are going to start reading the tasks and then relaying them in plain language on the paper next to us. Because what happens is we just read over the whole thing and go like, yeah, 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 I would like doing that. Or uh, yeah, I don't know what that means. And we don't take a minute to really think about it. So having the pen and paper next to you and kind of reading a bullet and going in plain language, what are they wanting me to do? helps us to start formulating, is this something we would like doing? So this means that you have to be an interpreter of job description language. Now, my favorite classic example of this is my first job as a marketing assistant at Sony had on it um, as part of the description that I would be managing the creative asset library for two TV shows. That sounded highly intimidating to 22 year old me. Like I manage some sort of digital library of content. What is this? Do you know what it meant y'all? It meant that I make sure the right logos for the show were in the right folders each year to go to the masses that would use those. Now, granted, there is some responsibility there. You don't wanna have, you know, last year's logo being used by people this year, but managing the creative asset library sounds very fancy compared to, oh yes, I checked one day and the right logo is in the file for the year. Don't need to do this again for another year. Okay, so I also found another uh, job description that I'm gonna read from to show you some of the ways that you need to be this interpreter. And this actually was a pretty good job description. This is one I found on Disney Careers and it wasn't over the top. We'll talk about over the top in a minute. But one of the bullets says, build a strong network and influence effectively across cross-functional partners on the ongoing management of a seamless new hire experience. So this is somebody who's going to help with training new people on board. But let's look at that first part. Build a strong network and influence effectively across cross-functional partners. That means you need to build relationships with people in other departments. Okay, so that's what you would do. On your piece of paper, you go build relationships, with people in other departments. Now, another one, collaborate with design team to enhance and script content to always deliver high quality and timely information to new hires. Integrate core values and organizational knowledge throughout orientation to create organizational alignment to the norms that differentiate the Walt Disney Company. All right, this means essentially, and I'm dumbing it down, but that's what we need to do. You are going to script and create PowerPoints that hit new hire um, guidelines and influence the and, and share the company culture. That's it. You really, if you want to dumb it down even further, you're going to create trainings through PowerPoint and scripts. There you go. So, be an interpreter and then write down what you've interpreted. Now, you need to go back and look at what you've written down and see what things go together. Like what things does it seem like they've broken out into parts, but they would go 
together. So I would, if I was going for that Disney job, which I'm not going, it's just an example. If I was going for that job, I would realize, okay, I need to build relationships with these departments to make sure their norms are, or their culture is in the trainings that I'd be creating for their department, right? Those things go together. And then what things do just seem like offshoots? This is gonna help in seeing how much time you're spending in what parts of the job. Just because something was written first doesn't always mean it's the thing you'd be doing the most. And some companies or some institutions love to give percentages of what you would do. Take those with a grain of salt. Okay, like you, if it has the highest percentage, that probably is the thing you're doing most. But if it says you're spending 35% of your time on something, they did not sit down and scientifically decide 35% of all time is given to this thing. It's just saying, here are some different areas you'll be working in. This percentage is highest, which means you'll be working in this thing the most. But if it doesn't have that, you need to start kind of decoding for yourself. What parts are you working in the most? Because sometimes what happens is we read a job description and there's one or two pieces of it that we go, man, I really love that part. I'm excited I get to do that. And you don't realize that like, yeah, you get to do that once a year, but everything that you have to do 99% of the time, you don't really enjoy, right? Or we get intimidated by something like, managing the digital creative asset library because it sounds fancy and it turns out oh that thing is really small in comparison to like the daily tasks but if you sit there and you look at the list you've created you can kind of start figuring out what those higher level or more time consuming things are based off what things pair together or themes of what's kind of repeated a lot. Okay, so now we need to cut out the noise. Some job descriptions are extremely long. They list everything you've ever possibly done or could possibly do in the description. That's a video for a whole other day that sometimes these are wanting Superman to do a job that the last person who was in that position didn't do it that way, but they've just put their wish list of everything they want in that job description. So now we need to cut through it. Job descriptions can be extremely long. They can list a bunch of different things you'd have to do that when you're just reading over it, you go, yeah, I'd enjoy that. But would you really enjoy it? Let's not let that one thing we like be over like overtake the 10 things we wouldn't like or vice versa. We see one thing we wouldn't like doing go, oh, this isn't the job for me. So on that paper that you've rewritten in plain, plain verbiage, plain words, go through and by each of the things that are listed, give a check to the ones that you would enjoy doing, right? Or a star to the things you'd enjoy doing and give a check to the things you wouldn't mind doing and then give a negative to the things you do not want to do. Add those up. How good does this job seem to you, right? Sometimes, like I said, we look and we go, oh, I'd really love that. And it's like, mm, it's not actually the thing you get to do that often, right? The example for this I always love to give is when someone told me that, like someone said there's a job of a buyer at a department store, I was like, what? And they're like, yes, you, like if you work in handbags at a fancy department store, you get to go to Italy and like, look at all the handbags and, and pick what we're going to use for the season. And then I looked into it more and found out, yeah, you get to do that for two weeks of the year. And the rest of the time you look at spreadsheets all the live long day. And I went, you know, not the job for me. But if I just seen both of those on a job description, if it were only those two things, I'd be like, I don't know, kind of sounds good. You need to see written out what all the pieces are, plus, minus, and star, or like star, check mark, and minus what you like so that you can see a really good picture of how much would I really like this job? Okay, now one more thing to look at. When you look through that super long job description, does this seem like this should be the job of three to four people and not just one? That is what we call a red flag. 
okay? We do not want to take that job. That job is going to be real hard. I would suggest moving forward cautiously. Now, if the things that are listed seem like things you'd really like to do, maybe move forward in the process, see if you get an interview, and then really be in depth and asking questions in the interview. But sometimes you can just tell from the job description, like, wait, how am I doing all of these? things. That just shows this is someone like whoever is hiring this doesn't have a clear picture of what this role should really entail. So maybe don't move forward or move forward with caution. So let's say you've done your list, you've done your, your star minus check system and you've realized, yes, I like this job. I like the skills that it's looking for, but I only have 60% of them apply. As long as you have 60 to 70% of the skills listed, go ahead and apply. We do not know who is in the pool, in the candidate pool. We do not know which tasks are most important to them. They could be bringing you in off 60%. It happens all the time. So don't be afraid that you don't have 100% of the skills. If you have some skills that show you can do the job, you're excited for what the job entails based off what you've now seen and interpreted go ahead and apply. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope this helps you go through that job description a little bit easier next time. Yeah, it might take you a little bit longer to go through it. Not long. This doesn't have to be, you know, a 20 minute session, but quickly jotting things down on a page so that we can really get a representation of what the job entails so that you can start applying to more jobs faster. And if you need more help with your job search, I do have a webinar I recommend for you. It's on demand. As soon as you sign up, you get the link to it. It is called Four Steps to Your Strategic Job Search. You can get it in the description box below. That's it for today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.